Parata. Parata. Good morning, everybody. Great to see you guys this morning. Who has had a good summer holidays? A oh, few people. Good, good. Well, it's so nice to see people again after like such a long time. We know we've been away for the last two weeks. Been down in the big city of Bath. Got to go on a double-decker bus, everybody. Highlight of our holiday, wasn't it, Kayla? No, great. So um, we're going to start off by doing a bit of worship together. and um, But worship with a twist. Because, I don't know if you feel this sometimes, but you know when you're in a season of transition, a bit like we are now, a bit new season, start a new term, who's just started a new school who started a new school or about to start a new school? Yeah, Peyton has. Buddy, you just started a new school, haven't you? So lots of new things, some things starting up again, some of you preparing big new things like getting married in a few weeks. Boop, boop. And um, yeah, lots of transitions. And it's weird, isn't it, in those seasons of transitions because you kind of balance in between the tension of trying to be still and like, push into what God's saying and intimacy with God. So the sense of God wanting us to be still and then other times when God's wanting us to move. And it's trying to learn and discern when does God want us to stop and when does he want us to move. So to illustrate my point a bit further, let's have a game of musical statues, worship. And I hear that the person to beat who is an absolute pro at musical statues, I hear, is Peyton. Is that right? She's very good at musical statues. So everyone, get to your feet. There is a little prize for the winner. So we're going to get um, deep cries out. I'm wondering, do Caleb, Caleb, if we're doing deep cries out, do you want to come and help me? Quinn or Bud, do any of you guys want to help me at the front? Or are you going to stay from there? Right, Matt, nice and loud. Matt's in charge of Paul.
If he goes that was wonderful and um, Amy I definitely think you should incorporate some sort of deep cries out into the first dance at the wedding I think Ash is clearly a pro oh fab I'm just gonna catch my breath before I try and sing <sighs> so we're gonna um, continue with our worship of, um, yeah, just enjoying God's good presence this morning. And then, um, kids, do you want to grab, we've got the banners, we've got the, whatever they're called, thingies that make noise. Yeah. Caleb's hungry, he might need a snack. Ooh, there's some in my bag, mm. But yeah, should we get to our feet? Yeah, Father God, we do. Um, we just want to, we want our hearts to cry out to you this morning. Arglwydd just then in Aragor Calonani, Ichti Barama. Yeah, Father God, we just want to rejoice in your presence, but more, God, we want you to speak to us. We want to encounter a fresh God. We want to invite you into this space, God. We just want to carve out time where we just say, God, I'm here. Arglwydd Dwyama, come and speak to me, Father. Come and give me hope. Come and show me where you're working. Remind me, God, show me afresh that you are fighting my battles. Oh, man. Nothing left 
Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone. Darkness seems to hide his face. I rest in his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds.
see is the battle You see my victory When all I see is the mountain You see a mountain shadow your love surrounds me there's nothing to fear now for I am safe with you so Just you go before us. 
Father God, just continue to move right now, Lord. God, the battles that we're facing, whether it's in relationships, financial jobs, depression, our children, our school, our friends, our identity, whatever God it is we're fighting for, our joy, our peace. God, we just choose to reposture ourselves this morning in a position of faith. We choose faith over fear, Father God. And we choose hope over despair, Father God. The battle belongs to you, Jesus Christ. Oh 
that a declaration this morning that we put our trust in you Jesus yeah so Father God just continue to speak to us this morning Lord and help us just, just, just discern where we need to move in our life where we need to be still in our life But Father God, over everything, we just declare and make a declaration over every area of our life. God, we put our trust in you, Jesus Christ, the one who is victorious, who's mighty to save. God, we love you. Oh, man. Do you guys want to take a seat? And I'm going to hand over to Al, who's going to share this morning. So if the kids haven't already, if they want to go to the back, they've got some fun stuff at the back. So Caleb and Quinn, if you guys want to go join Peyton, take any of the bits you need with you. Now I'm hand over to Al. Right, bore da paub. Go on here. Cool, great. Well, welcome everyone, and welcome as well. This is the first time we've actually done this. Welcome if you are watching later. Hello, we're actually gonna put this online, and it's gonna hopefully work. Um, but it's gonna just go up later rather than trying to live stream this morning. So welcome later, we miss you. See you next week. Cool, deal? Great, right, we're there. So um, this week we are starting the first part of our re-September. So re-September, this theme that is beautifully, is it alliteration when it's the same? Is it is it alliteration where it starts with the same thing? Yeah. So regather, retreat, reimagine, and resource. So regather is about us coming back together. That's this morning. Us coming back together after this COVID season, after the summer season, back to us gathering weekly. So that is one thing to note: is that we are going to gather every Sunday. Um, for church, again, physically together, like this sort of thing. At the minute, we're still here. Sorry it was really late kind of explaining where we're going to meet this week. To be honest, we didn't know until Friday afternoon, did we? Because we were trying to look at other venues as well, um, trying to see if we could get back into Ebenezer, but Rachel will give you more details about that later. Then next week, we have got retreat. So next Saturday, we have got our Lighthouse Day, which is really exciting. Really, really encourage everyone to be there. We've just put it into the afternoon rather than the whole weekend to try and make sure as many people can be there for as long as possible. So that's next Saturday where we are going to retreat and have some time to reflect and restore over this season, but also to have a bit of fun together, bit of a bonfire, bit of a, yeah, just fun time together and uh, loads of family stuff as well so the kids are gonna love it too then the week after we have our reimagine gathering which is our vision sunday so we set sail for what we believe god has for us in this year me and rachel will just outline some of the stuff that we've been challenged with some of the opportunities we see um, and some of the giftings that we see within our community that we want to see released over this next year. And then that is followed with our resource. So this is our Giving Sunday, 
where we resource the kingdom here on Anglesey and we actually um, look at our finances. We want to be really open and accountable with where we're at, where we're going, um, as well as our time and other resources that we have. And we start every new academic year with this vision and giving Sunday. Um, but this year, we kind of thought that because of everything that's gone, because of the summer where so many people are away and are still away, because it's the first chance for 18 months we've had an opportunity to connect with so many people, um, because we are probably all fatigued as well. I don't know about you, but me and Rach are still, even after two weeks off, we are exhausted. Um, we, we came back last week a bit like, oh man, here we go. Whereas usually we would come back being like, come on, let's go. But that's okay. After the last 18 months we've had, after a really busy summer of being away a lot because we're reconnecting with family or hosting lots of people, which seems to be the thing on Anglesey, especially Jan, I know you found that this year. First year on Anglesey, everyone is coming every weekend, which is amazing to see people, to share this beautiful place. But yes, by the end, it gets exhausting. And so we kind of thought, instead of diving in week one into, here's our vision for the year, let's go get them, woo! We actually thought, you know what, actually, let's just pause. Let's just take a moment to regather first, to celebrate together, to retreat, and just have some time to reflect, like we are not next Saturday going to sort out all of the last 18 months' trauma, all of the stuff that we've had to go through, all of the things that have happened outside of COVID as well, where we haven't had quite the connection and community to get through it. We are not going to deal all with that on one afternoon, but we are going to just take our time in this September to move into that. And then we will share a bit more about vision and begin to really start that momentum, which is also part of the reason why small groups um, we're kind of still meeting all together for small group over the next couple of weeks with some fun stuff. And then small groups will kind of relaunch fully after Vision Sunday and all of that. Rach will explain more later. But we recognize people are fatigued, hurting, aching after a long season we have been in. And when we look forward to the winter as well, like the truth is we just don't know what it holds, do we? Will social distancing measures come back in? Will we have another lockdown? Who knows what that looks like? Additional vaccinations, whether people take those up or not, whatever is going through people's minds. And it is tough. And there's been regular times where both me and Rach have really sort of been questioning, like, are we doing the right thing? Are we in the right place? Like, we are so tired. Our confidence has taken such a huge hit this year as I'm sure all of our confidence in so many different ways has really been hit. Maybe we're now facing mental health challenges that we never thought that we would face. Maybe there's isolation or loneliness. Maybe there is a disconnect from reading scripture or prayer. Maybe our financial situation is in a different place, whatever it might be. But don't worry, you are not alone in this. So let's regather and let's retreat together as a community first and then look ahead to what comes next. Because the last few weeks I've been sat in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. I've just really been drawn to that. And because it has amazing parallels to church planting, like we still really do feel very much like a church plant kind of transitioning, but there's still that element of it's only three years ago we started Capital Galadian. So much has changed and so much has been shifted over this time. And and Ezra and Nehemiah, this story of going back to rebuild Jerusalem, um, it's kind of like church planting because they, they, they are sent out. They get kind of told, like, you know, go and rebuild. They gather people together to a common vision. They build. They get opposition from external forces. They have challenges with internal relationships. They're building while defending so they have to keep on going and keep on building, even though the walls are only half fortified. There's attacks coming in from all angles, so they then have to stand guard by night and build by day. It's amazing how it literally goes step by step through 
this house was built by this family that had this section of the wall and then next door to them they had this section of the wall next door to them it was literally people were it's like the old roman you know artillery thing where you just had to rely on the person next to you because all you could focus on was what you had at that time and trust the person next to you was doing their job too and if you were part of Capo Galadi pre-COVID, when you look around now, things look really different, don't they? We're not in our usual cozy, warm, welcoming building, Ebenezer, because restrictions are still limiting us going back there fully. We don't have coffee and pastries. Don't we miss the pastries when you come in? That's right, Jan, we used to have pastries as we walked in. Oh tea and coffee as we walked in. There are lots of new faces and we are missing some who were a big part of our community who are no longer with us. We still have to wear masks while we're singing and as we're sat around. There's a lot that has changed. Some for the better and some that we are still grieving, that we are still trying to process and that we are still seeing what happens next. And this feeling isn't new. Ezra and Nehemiah felt it. So Ezra, when he starts um, out, he goes out with this amazing blessing. The king says to him, go and rebuild the temple. That is fine. I am happy for you to rebuild your, your God's temple. Go and do this. Here, take everything with you. Go and take all the things out of the storeroom that we stole. Go and replace all those. It's amazing. The altar is rebuilt. The temple is in the process of being rebuilt. And then in Ezra 4 opposition and a new king happens. Ezra 4 verse 23, if you did want to follow with, is as soon as the copy of the letter of King Artaxerxes was read to Rahum and Shemazai, the secretary and their associates, they went immediately to the Jews in Jerusalem and compelled them by forcing them to stop. Thus, the work on the house of God in Jerusalem came to a standstill until the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. So, Ezra goes out. There's this rebuilding happening. All of this amazing stuff is happening. Jerusalem is coming back to life. There's opposition and a new king that they go to and kind of tell some half-truths of, hang on a minute, you remember when these were powerful before? You don't want them to be powerful again. You better stop this rebuilding. The king says, you're right. Make them stop. So they have to stop. And now, as you read it, you kind of think, oh, okay, so they stopped for a little while and it was a bit inconvenient. Do you know this pause? They reckon that this pause on building the temple halted for 18 years. 18 years in these, just between verse 23 and 24, where it says, work was halted, and then it wasn't started again until Darius became king. 18 years. Can you imagine? Many things in our lives feel as though they have been halted for 18 months, and we are really carrying the burden of that. Maybe seeing your family, your sports or community group, dare I say that church has felt as though it has been kind of on halt for 18 months. There have been little things that we really miss doing, singing without a mask for one. So 18 years, this rebuilding is paused or halted for. After all this excitement, all of this, we have momentum, we are going to go and get and we are going to change this land again for God's. They then have it stopped for 18 years. And then eventually rebuilding begins. Darius becomes king. Ezra sees that this is an opportunity. He says, go and look at the archives. Look, we have been granted this. We've been told to rebuild. It is a good thing. Let us continue. And so rebuilding begins and Ezra goes back to Jerusalem and he sees the people and the people are not in a good place. They've lost their identity. Their community that they have there has been influenced by all those around them. In Ezra 10, um, Ezra is going back and while Ezra is playing and confessing, weeping and throwing himself down before the house of God, a large crowd of Israelites, men, women and children gathered around him and they wept bitterly. 
Then Shechaniah, son of Jehiel, one of the descendants of Alam, said to Ezra, We have been unfaithful to our God by marrying foreign women from the peoples around us. But in spite of this, there is still hope for Israel. So the text here says that the people intermarried, which don't worry, that's not kind of like a weird, you know, like prejudice, racist thing. It's actually just outlining that the people of Jerusalem who were set apart for God, who God said, here is my law, follow this, do these things and you will be at one with me. You will be my people and I will bless you. They separated from that and they started to get influenced by all those things around them. They suddenly start to think, oh, actually, maybe what those guys over there are doing with their worship isn't that bad. Quite fancy her. Oh, I'll I'll just take that into my behaviors or into my identity. And, And they didn't separate themselves out and pursue God unswaveringly. Unswavering? Unswervingly. So they were dabbling in all different things that were challenging. So during this 18 years of halt, the people lost sight of the important thing. They drifted. The people changed. They moved. They shifted. It was hard. And to be honest, they probably even during this 18 years felt so discouraged that they thought, do we even need to rebuild the temple? Do we even need to bother? Like, we're doing all right. Maybe what they were doing over there isn't so bad. I'm, I'm still in Israelite. I'm still, I'm still here. You know, we're still in Jerusalem. Like, it's okay. We're still living here like it's a ruin and we don't have a temple. But, but it's all right, isn't it? So honestly now, and no need to outwardly sort of respond to this. But I bet many of us over the last 18 months have thought, oh, do I really need church? Maybe online church isn't that bad. It's quite cozy. It means I can kind of, you know, have my coffee and pastry. Maybe I can sit there. You know, I'm still spiritually fed. I can, I can listen to any podcast or watch any video from any church in the whole world. Like, how gifted are those speakers? I can get my worship and do that at any point I want. Maybe I don't really need the physically gathered thing. Like, what really, if we think about it, is the point of church? Is it a building? No, it's not. Come on, we all know that. Maybe some habits and behaviors have led us to questioning our giving of our time or of our finances. Maybe there has been something around where I quite like the rhythm of doing this. And that, if I do that, that means, you know, maybe the physical gathering isn't that easy for me. I can catch up later or maybe I don't need to give quite as much so I can just enjoy the pleasures of life a little bit more. Whatever it is. And dare I say that some have have just sort of thought, oh, do I even think that Capucalady is going in the right way? Do I like the fact that we've got all these restrictions Shouldn't we just be doing it anyway? And you know what? Me and Rachel have thought those things as well. Don't worry. We've questioned at times. Our confidence has taken a hit. We have at moments been like, oh man, like why are we doing these things? Why are we doing it like this? But I think every leader across the country has thought that. At some point over the last 18 months, I think everyone in any position of leadership, or to be honest, at any position of anything has thought that. The housing market has gone mad because people have decided, I need to move, I want this for my house. Jobs, they're saying that it's like the great transition in jobs because the, it's always greener on the other side. So that job, if I moved from where I am, because I don't want to go back to that, I don't want to go back into that office, I'm going to move to that job. It is amazing how many jobs people are changing. Over the last 18 months, people have questioned everything. And Ezra felt this as well. He went back after 18 years, saw the people in disarray, and he just wept. And he went to the people. But you know what? The people responded to Ezra, not how he expected it. He was weeping by himself. Amazingly, in the start of that, he just went back and was like, I'm going to lock myself in a room because these people are a mess. 
I just need to go before God because I can't go to them. Look at them. But they hear him. They come and join him. They weep with him. And then in Ezra 10 verse 3, they say, Now let's make a covenant before our God to send away all these women and their children in accordance with the counsel of my Lord and of those who fear the commands of our God. Let it be done according to the law. And then verse 4, the people say to Ezra, rise up. This matter is in your hands. We will support you. So take courage and do it. So Ezra rose up, put the leading priests and Levites and all of Israel under an oath to do what had been suggested. And they took the oath. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to make you swear an oath to Capogaladi because that would be wrong. Um, and, but what I am going to say is just well done. Just really well done for being here, for making it this far, for regathering today or for watching later online. Well done. Because it has been tough. There have been so many challenges and there are so many challenges that lie ahead that at the start of this academic year, it would be so easy to be like, let's just put all that under the carpet and let's move on with excitement and enthusiasm. Let's go and just, just forget the last 18 months ever happened and let's go and do this. But as we regather like the people rebuilding the city of Jerusalem in Ezra and Nehemiah, let's reflect and not just brush it under the carpet. Let's take some time to restore our minds and our spirits, and then let's reimagine what God has for us as a community as we envisage and as we resource the kingdom here on Anglesey going forwards. When the people regathered and the walls of the city were rebuilt, we see in Nehemiah 8, the people all came together as one. And Nehemiah 8 verse 1 says this, All the people came together as one in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra, the teacher of the law, to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon. Can I just stop there? Can you imagine if one day we're just like, you know what, we're just going to read scripture from daybreak till noon. You guys just sit and listen. I think that's great. We should do that. That's what we're doing next week, by the way. Next Saturday? Cool. Great. So he read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. It's great that, isn't it? That it puts men and women there. So many people think that in that era, anyway, different time. Talk about that another time. All of the people listened attentively to the book of the law. And if we skip down to verse 9, it says, Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and the teacher of the law, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice foods and sweet drinks and send some of those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Levites calmed all the people saying, be still for this day is a holy day. Do not grieve. Oh. Where is it? Then all the people went away to eat and drink, to send portions of food and to celebrate with great joy because they now understood the words that had been made known to them. So when people first gathered together after the hard, hard slog of rebuilding Jerusalem, they wept. They were just like, oh man, that was tough. That was too hard. Like we're back together now, but You don't know what we've been through. You don't know how tough that was. You don't know how I'm feeling now. I feel so disconnected. All I've been doing is building and defending. I haven't had a break. I am exhausted. But then this pity party ends when Nehemiah steps up and he goes, you know what, guys? Yeah, it has been tough. It has been really difficult. 
But come on, we're back together. Yes, it looks different. Things have changed. Yes, there are still obstacles in the way and details ahead of us are still not clear. Yes, it has been beyond difficult in this season, which I will add has been generations for these guys, not just 18 months, but anyway. But, he says, let's celebrate. And those that don't have anything, take stuff to them so they can join in the party too. And Capo Galedi, we are back together. Yes, it looks different. Things have changed. Yes, there are still obstacles in the way and details that are not yet clear. Yes, it has been beyond difficult in the last season. But let's celebrate. This September, we are regathering, retreating, reimagining and resourcing for the year and the years ahead. And to end, I just want to repeat a part of Rach. Um, if you didn't see the notice email this week, really encourage you. Rach just wrote a bit more of kind of a vision piece at the start this week. And it ended with this saying. We want to be a people that choose faith over fear, connection over isolation, and fruitfulness over convenience. I'll say it again. We want to be a people that choose faith over fear, connection over isolation, and fruitfulness over convenience. And you know what? It's tough. There is a tension in this time. As we start the new academic year, it'd be so easy just to kind of run on and be like, things are starting to get back to normal. Like this week, I go back into the office for the first time in 18 months. It'd be so easy to kind of say, oh, everything's back to normal now. Yeah, we still got to wear masks every so often. And yeah, there's, there's some challenges. But, but we need to be still. We need to be still and reflect and restore Yet there's a tension between also being called to move. To get back to life how we want it. To get back to some sort of normality. Like in rebuilding in Jerusalem in Nehemiah. Um, Nehemiah prayed. He repented and wept before God. But while the guarding and was incomplete, the Israelites were kind of like felt as though they were still building. Yet they were waiting. In another part, um, where Moses and the Israelites are about to enter the promised land, there's a section where God says to them, be still and move. There's this idea of be still in God's presence so that God can move ahead of you. That's what he was saying to them in the promised land. Be still before me and I will move. And I warn you that this is not going to be a quick fix Next week at our Lighthouse Retreat Day and next Sunday, there's going to be loads of time to reflect and restore and respond and to leave things in the last 18 months we don't want to take ahead and then also begin to get excited about what is to come. But my challenge to you this week in preparation for that is to just take time to stop, be still, Get rid of all distraction and simply say to God, as I wait on you, will you move in us? God, as I wait on you, will you move in me? So let's do it now. So do you guys want to all get to your feet? Rach, can you come and lead us in another song? Is that right? Um. So we're going to have a final worship song, but today to end, I just want us to pause just for a second, just to stand still, just to settle for a moment. And then just in your heart, just say, God. Here I am. In this week, God, meet with me. Begin this process of restoring things that have been lost. Restoring confidence, restoring identity, 
restoring enthusiasm, God, so that we can go and celebrate. And God, as I wait on you, will you move in me? I just get a sense that for some of us, it's um, it would just be great to have a bit of space to pray. And um, so just as we worship, I don't know, perhaps maybe just these chairs over here or this kind of space over here. And if you just... Something resonated of this sense of, yeah, I'm feeling like unanchored. I'm feeling a bit lost in this season. So much change. And I know that something in my heart feels out of line. Then I'd just love for us to create a space to be able to pray for each other. Those of you that know your prayer warriors or leadership team here, just if you see anyone just kind of come into these chairs and standing over here, it'd be great just to pray with them in whatever way that person feels comfortable maybe ask them first but um yeah so just as we worship I just want to create a space so come just over here if you just actually yeah I just want to I want to dig a bit deeper with this and I feel like I need some help and just would love someone to pray with me so we're going to do build my life again Jesus, the name above. 